night. Amen. Praise God. you called Moses into the wilderness. You put a rod in his hand. You used him to lead your people to the promised land. Lord, willing to love you. So take my life and use it to
If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me to sum it all up. Amen. At this time, Isaiah is going to sing. And then after that, his, we'll turn it over to the hands of Pastor Ray to minister. Isaiah, he was just here. Amen. Come on, let's keep it moving. It's been an incredible night. Amen. It's been an incredible night. These kids have been amazing. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. 
just for me. Where would I be if you left me, God? Where would I be if you left me, God? Where would I be, yeah, if you left me, God? Where would we be, yeah, if he left us? Where would I be? Come and help me sing it. If you left me, God, where would I be if you left me? Where would I be yeah, if you left me, God? Where would I be yeah, if you left me, God? You waited. You waited. You waited, 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 you waited. Where would I be if you left me, God? Where would I be, yo, if you left me, God? Where would I be if you left me, God? Where would I be if you left me? Where would I be if you left me, God? Where would I be? If you left me, God, where would I be? If you left me, God, where would I be? If you left me, God, where would I be? If you left me, God, where would I be? If you left me, God, where would we be? If you left me, God, where would I be? If you left me, waited. You waited. You waited. You waited. Wait, can I just tell y'all? Um, why I'm singing this song. So, right now I'm just dealing with a lot, like, war in my mind, and spiritual war. And, um, I'm, sometimes I feel disconnected from Jesus. And, and, so, uh, I always listen to my dad. I always um, ask him and I tell him things because it's a sad place to be when you feel like Jesus is not there, but he's always there. But it's just a spiritual war in your mind, and that's what I was going through. So I was really dealing with a lot of things, not too much, but it's just mainly in my mind. And I go, I went to my parents' room for some reason, and I lay in their bed and I go on my YouTube and I see Travis Green singing this song that you waited and I just start crying because it really brought to me that Jesus waited for me and he sees the things that I'm doing every day. He sees that I'm reading the Bible and he sees that I'm singing for him. And my dad says that if you draw a line to him, he'll draw a line to you. So every day I'm worshiping him and I'm reading my word, and I'm praying, because we can't make it without Jesus. So I'm just asking just a little bit, if you could just worship Jesus, and if you could just give him whatever you want, any sound that you have in your heart, and amplify it through your mouth, and just begin to worship God. Can you just do that for me?
do it for God. You waited, you waited, you waited for me, God. 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 So I'll give you glory. I'll give you glory. Give you glory. Can you say that? I give you glory. I give you glory. Give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Glory. Give you glory. Glory. How many people know that the Lord waited for us? But some, sometimes, well, not sometimes, soon that waiting will be over. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm going to come down here. Thank you, Isaiah. Beautiful job. Thank you. Um, everybody stand for one minute. Uh, the youth have done a wonderful job tonight. Great job, great job, great job. To Sister Mary, awesome job. You're doing a great job with the youth, to all of your helpers. Uh, to Bishop Simmons, God bless you. To all of the clergy. To my wonderful wife who did a wonderful job. Thank you very much. God bless you, love you, sweetie. Listen, the time is so far spent. Um, and I was over there praying, uh, and I said, Lord, what should I do? God, it's so, it's so far spent. Um, but I'm going to give you what God has given me, and we're going to make it quick. I'm going to kind of condense it a little bit. Um, but it's, it's so important that you hear this. Amen? Amen. Bow your heads. Father, we love you today. We honor your name. We thank you for this time and space that you have ordained before I was ever created. Lord, you knew the plan before I ever got here. So, Father, I'm here to speak to your people. Now, Lord, the words of my mouth, let it penetrate the hearts of your people, the seed of the word of God, that it will take up root in their heart and that it will bring forth fruit that not only will benefit them, but it will benefit others that are around them from the seed of the word of God. Satan, we turn to you right now. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. We speak to every principality that is hovering over this atmosphere. We speak to you right now. We say you die and leave this place. In Jesus' name, so our minds are alert and our hearts are receptive to receive your word of God on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. amen. Put those hands together as you go to your seat. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, do I have any praises in the house? Hallelujah. you that hallelujah hallelujah yeah! we serve a great God a God that never changes he's the same yesterday today and forevermore the problem with his creation we change a lot we change yesterday and we change the day and tomorrow we'll make changes as well.
but we serve a God that never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You can depend on him. We live by laws. Everybody say laws. L-A-W-S. If you break a law, chink, chink, you're going to jail. Anybody been there before? I spent some time in jail. It was the county, but it was the jail. It was only for a few hours, but to me, it was a lifetime. Can y'all hear me just for a minute? Well, I promise you, we're going to be done in a minute. But if you break the law, you will spend the time. Naturally and spiritually. If you break the law spiritually, you will not receive the benefits that God has ordained for your life. One of the laws is faith. It's a principle to believing in God. Stay right there for one more minute. We're getting there. We're getting there. I'll treat you to dinner tonight. <laughs> one of the laws is faith. God set up principles that we should believe. Believe beyond what we see. We're so used to handling physical things all the time. So to say that I believe in a God that I cannot see is ludicrous to the world. The world says that you Christian people are crazy because you believe in a God that you can't even see. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So even though, Father, I don't believe you, I don't see you rather, I believe you. I believe you sent your son to die for us. I believe you sent your son. He died a cruel death, but he went into the grave and he handled business. And the Bible says on the third day, he rose with all power. He rose with all power. And check this out. The blood still works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Over 2,000 years ago, this happened. And the blood still works. But we live by principles. We live by laws. And if you break it, you will not receive the benefits of it. Teaching our youth early. It's the same principles. Truth is parallel. It's the same principles. If you break a spiritual law, you will not receive the benefits. So if you don't obey the law, you will be locked up naturally and spiritually. You must believe that when God made you, he made the best you. When God created you, he broke the mold. He didn't need to make another you. Because when you arrived on the scene, he said, it is finished. When you got here, it doesn't matter how you got here. It doesn't even matter if you know your daddy or if you don't know your mama. You're here. Check this out. This might help some adults, too. God doesn't create anything and say, oop, I messed up. No, nah, that's not God. Everything on the face of this earth has purpose. To the cockroach, we don't even want to put, you know, have nothing to do with. Yeah, we don't like that. But they have purpose. To your very being, you have purpose. So if you are here, you are meant to be here. Check this out, and we're going to move swiftly. God didn't create you to break. He didn't, he didn't create you to break under pressure. When you're, in, when you're in school or when you're at your job and people are getting on your nerves or you got more bills than money for the adults, I'm getting back to you. God didn't create you to break. He said, I'm giving your hands power to get wealth. So he did not create you to break. I, I got to get to my scripture. Hey, turn your Bibles to Philippians, and this is, everybody knows this, this scripture. Philippians 4.13. Yes, 
So my question is for you. Somebody let me, where's my, let me know when 20 minutes gets here and, and we'll be good. Whatever you do, did you learn to do it? Okay, Ray. Did you learn to do it or did you pick up a habit? Did you learn from somebody else that learned from somebody else? We call it learned behavior. You, it, you know, the, the, we do things and, and, and we don't realize that we're doing it. We picked it up from somebody else. Anybody been there? We picked it up from somebody else, bad or good, but we pick up habits. Just learn the habit that you got from somebody else that got from somebody else that got it from somebody else, but you picked it up and adopted it. I'm going somewhere with this. Watch this. Uh, Philippians 4.13. But watch this. You, you heard somebody say, I can't. It's too hard. I just can't. Anybody here? Yeah, anybody here say anybody? Uh, while you were in school, you ever hear somebody say that? Yeah, I, I can't. I can't do it. Your teacher gives you a problem in school and you say, I can't do the problem. You heard somebody say that and you picked up the habit. But the scripture says, everybody say it, I can do all things through Christ. Thank you. We learned that in elementary school. When we were kids, we learned that. I can do all things through Christ, which gives me strength, another version says. Watch this. But in the Greek, watch how the Greek reads. And, and you know, follow me. I know we got a lot of Bible scholars out there. But for those that don't know, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, and then the New Testament was written in Greek. A couple, couple of books in the Old Testament was written in Aramaic. But the Greek... Um, you know how we read our Bibles today? We got verse, chapters. That's not how it was originally written. It was one scroll. Okay? So we're going to the Greek now, the original language, the original writing of this verse. So this is how it reads in the original writing. It says, uh, all things I am strong for. Y'all going to get this in a minute. It says, all things I am strong for. The rest of it says in the original writing, in the one strengthening me. Y'all going to get this in a minute. It says, all things I am strong for. Meaning he didn't create you to break. You were created with everything you need to survive, to be successful, to get beyond where you are to the next level, to where God wants you to be, because in him we shall live, move, and have our being. But it's only in him. So he says, all things I am strong for. Hey, check this out. You don't even have to go to the gym to lift weights. You don't have to get on the floor to do any push-ups. You don't have to, you know, do squats and lunges and all that stuff. Why? Because what you need to be successful in, he already put it in you. He already put it in you. He said, he said, all things I am strong for. Watch this. In the one strengthening me. You don't have to go to the gym and work it out. Not saying you don't have to, because some of us really need to. <laughs> that was just a little curveball. But spiritually, he already gave you everything you need to survive. God's laws, watch this, leave no room for negotiation, debate, nor discussion. It is what it is. Uh, do you want to change your life? You must change something about the changes you want in your life to create change. You must participate in your own success. You can't just sit back and allow things to happen to you and think it's just going to change. No, you got to get up and do something about it. Why? Because God created you to. 
If you don't like your, your environment or what's going on around you, change it. You move on. If you don't like the school buddies in, in, on the schoolyard, they keep talking that yang, you move away from them. You don't have to be around them. No, you create your own environment. The laws of faith is non-negotiable. We learn this. It's a principle. So we have the law of faith. Watch this. Just like we have the law of gravity. We all know about the law of gravity. What goes up must come down. We, we respect the law of gravity. Why? Because we know we're not going to, you know, we respect it to the point that we're not going to get on the highest building and jump off and say, God, I believe you can keep me. Lord, I believe you can keep me flying. No, we're not going to do that. We respect the law of gravity because what goes up must come down. That's gravity. I'm going to teach you something real quick. And also, watch this. So just like we respect the law of gravity, we must respect the law of faith. You not only must believe in God, but you must believe in you. God said, I can do all things. You must believe in you. You must believe in you. That's important. Just like the law of gravity, God put some stuff in us that is sustainable to our very existence in this life. So watch this. Let me move. Watch this. Anybody hear the, uh, the word uh, gravitational pull? It, it's like the earth pulling on you and keeping you on the ground. It's keeping you stable. Okay? The pull is gravity at work. It's pulling us. It's keeping us down. Every object in the universe that has mass exerts a gravitational pull. Okay? It's a force on every other mass. So watch this. The size of the pool depends on the mass of the object. So this piano is heavier than I am. So I can't really pick it up that good because it's heavier. So it's more of a gravitational pull. That's what keeps it down. Amen? So just like, uh, put up my picture. Uh, just like, uh, for an example, an airplane. We get ready to go somewhere, y'all. Y'all, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm almost there. But just like a 747 jumbo jet, anybody ever flown before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. So watch this. So just like there, I, I, was, I was watching a video, and there was a pilot explaining how planes fly. Okay? Leave that picture up. I, I need y'all to see that. Uh, a, a 747 jumbo jet, weighs about 600,000 pounds. 600,000 pounds. That's more than a half a million pounds. It flies, although it flies like it's 10 pounds. How can that be? Hang with me for a minute. I'm going to bring it back home. You say, you're getting off the Bible. I'm in the, I'm in the chapter. Watch this. So it's 600,000 pounds carrying 400 people to 600 people. Can you imagine that? But yet it flies like it's 10 pounds, carrying 400 people to 600 people. To me, that blows my mind. Mm -hmm. So how does a 600,000 pound plane fly? So I was listening to this video and I was doing some reading and this airplane pilot answers the question, an airplane uses four laws, gravity, drag, thrust, and lift. We got a military man, he, he can confirm that. Uh -huh. All my education people, y'all know where I'm, I'm coming from. We're going to reel it in in a minute. So we got four laws at work to create this plane and cause it to fly. We got gravity, and I really don't have time to really get into this, but I'm gonna do the best I can. And we have gravity, we have drag, we have thrust, and we have lift. <laughs> so, so, so he said, 
600, so this is what the pilot said. He said 600,000 pounds leaves the ground because the law of gravity is canceled by another law called lift. The law of gravity is canceled. So the very thing that God set in motion from the beginning of time, gravity, it's here on earth. It is literally canceled to another law called lift. They defy the law of gravity by putting another law in its place. When you speed this plane, when the plane is on the tarp and it's, it's, it's building momentum, and it hits 160 miles per hour on the ground. The speed creates another law. Right. Hang in there with me. I, you go, it's it's going to be good. It creates another law. It's almost impossible to keep it on the ground once it hits 160 miles an hour. It's impossible to keep a 600,000 pound plane on the ground once it hits this speed. So you say, Pastor, what are you talking about? As long as it's still, it's impossible to move it. As long as this plane stays still, it's impossible to move it. Watch this. Faith requires action. Faith requires movement. You can't say and come to church every day of your life, read the Bible without putting feet to your faith. You cannot read the Bible morning, noon, and night and say, God, I trust you. I believe you. I'll preach it, Lord. I'll sing about it. Lord, I love you, Lord. I love you. And soon as crisis comes knocking at your door, you ready to crumble like a building. Faith requires action. But watch this. I'm just about that. When it hits a certain speed, another law kicks in. Also, it, 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 it stays on the ground at this speed. So watch this. If it were to stay on the ground at this speed, it would literally destroy itself. Something must happen when this plane gets into movement. Yeah. Something must happen once this plane goes into movement. Because if it stays on the ground, it would destroy itself. Once it hits the speed, it creates another law. You don't remember the word called aerodynamics. Mm -hmm. Aerodynamics. Gravity surrenders to the law of lift. What makes this airplane fly is a law that God created. That God created. What is going to get you out of your mess? Another law. <laughs> what is going to make you successful? Another law. Which will cancel this law. Check this out. Anybody been depressed before? Yeah, yeah. We all been there. Had some moments and, 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 and you know, felt like giving up, throwing in your hands and say, Lord, I'm just done. Been there, done that. Lord, I'm done. Y'all been there before? Been in school, it's like, ah, I'm just so done with this one. And you're just ready to quit. You got to replace that spirit of depression with another law. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So what are you thinking? Is your mind on depression or is your mind on I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength? Are you ready to throw in the towel or are you ready to just transfer over to this other law that God had already placed in you and I can do all things? Uh, my God. So watch this. God has 
laws that is supposed to kick in to cause you to lift away from different spirits called depression and stress. You keep going to the doctor and the doctor can't figure out what's wrong with you. You're all stressed out because you're operating in this negative law that the devil set up for you. But if you learn to just shift your mind, if you learn to just shift your mind, I can do all things through Christ. Uh, anybody drive a stick ship before? If you're in first gear, you're not going to go too far. If you're in first gear, you're not going to go very far. You're, you're, you're traveling, you're moving, but eventually if you don't shift, you will burn that gear out because that first gear wasn't created to stay there. That first gear was created to shift to another level. Yeah, my God. And then once you get to second gear, you got to get out of second gear too because you wasn't created to stay in second. You must move to the next level. You got to shift from first to second to third. And then there's another level. And we call that fourth gear. Once you get to fourth gear, you can kind of travel a little bit. You can kind of travel a little bit. <laughs> but then there's, there's, there's a part of our engine that we put it on cruise control. We're not even driving at that point. <laughs> Once you shift and you go to another level and another level, at a certain point, you just start gliding. You start gliding. But it takes you to get you there. You must be involved in your change. You must be involved in your rescue. You must be involved in your healing. Oh, my God. Oh, I, I got to bring this in, y'all. I got to bring this in. You must be involved. You must be involved. So watch this. God said, I want you to mount up on wings like an eagle. I want you to soar above your problems, not be a part of the problem. I want you to take flight, and I need you to soar above your problem. So don't pray for depression to go away. You know, gravity never goes away. You go away. <laughs> watch this, y'all, watch this. Y'all see that plane? It's crazy, man. Crazy. So watch this. John 16, 33 says this. And for the second time, just read it real quick. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Uh, you, have, you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. He said, get some happy about it. Yeah, yeah, you're going to go through some stuff. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. Nobody has never, ever been through anything. We've all, from the preacher to the undertaker, we've all been through some stuff. <laughs> hey, check this out. I, I remember when I was about, maybe not y'all's age. I remember when I, yeah, about y'all's age. I was a teenager, y'all, and I was going through some emotional, crazy stuff. I had got hurt by a female. Yeah, I got hurt, man. I was just like, yo, I'm just hurt right now by this female, man. And so I was hurt so much, man. I, you know, we lived in Venice Park, and so there's this football field, and it was kind of dark. It was at night. And, you know, I was, I was raised in the church, so I'm like, man, I'm hurt. I'm going out to this football field, and I'm going to stand in the middle of it, and I'm going to cry out to God. And I know, God, you're going to hear me because I'm your child. Yeah, I'm your child. And you're going to come to my rescue. Why? Because I sing for you. I worship you, God. Yeah, yeah, I was a little child thinking like this. So I ran out to the football field, and I just screamed out. I said, Lord, help me. Rescue me, Lord. Help me, God. If it was daylight, people would have thought I was crazy. 
but it was at night. And so I'm in the middle of this football field, and I'm screaming out to God, and I'm just expecting the clouds to just separate and a beam of light to just shine down on me and say, my son. <laughs> I just knew because I worship God. I'm a, I'm a born-again believer. If I call upon your name, you shall be there. I was expecting God to just burst through the clouds like, what's his name? The, the guy that, that, that plays the part of Jesus got that deep voice. My child, I am here. What dost thou want? King James Version, y'all. King, you know, God speaks King James Version. Yeah. <laughs> I was expecting God to crash suit, but check this out. Nothing happened. Nothing. I left that field more confusing than when I went in. <laughs> Why? Because God already said it in me to create my own atmosphere. If you sad, make yourself glad. It's up to you. If you feel like crying, make yourself happy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Think on something good. Transition your mindset. Because as you think, so you shall be. So if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. If you think you will be successful, you will be successful. If you think you won't, you won't. It's totally up to you. But for the longest, the devil had us in the prison of our mind, like my son was talking about earlier. The prison of our minds. That, that's where the battle is. That is the arena of the fight. That's where it all goes down. That is where it all goes down. Do you understand that there are 12,000 thoughts during a day that we think about? I did a study about the mind because I'm in the transition of writing a book. And so the mind, there was this professor that did a study at this university, and he said the average person thinks 12,000 thoughts a day. You're, you're not even aware of it, but we are constantly thinking. In here, I'm thinking. Chairs are blue, children sitting on my left, young adults sitting on my right. My mind is constantly seeing and thinking. Watch this though. 93% of those thoughts are non-essentials. Like the phone call we just got before we got here. It might not even be serious, but we, because we think it is, that's a non-essential. Things that we think is going to happen tomorrow Tomorrow hadn't even gotten here yet, but we think it's going to happen tomorrow. It's non-essentials. It hadn't even gotten here yet. Why are you living in tomorrow and tomorrow hadn't gotten here yet? We live in today. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Watch this. By the time tomorrow gets here, we will rename it today. So this is the day I create who I am. I am because God says I am. He put in me what I need to be successful. It's up to me. If I think I can, I will. This is why when we got here, and I'm totally off script, but we're just going to get there. Watch this. When we transitioned from North Carolina to, to back here, back home to New Jersey, I was kicking and screaming. Can I just be real? Because we had it good in North Carolina, y'all. We had just purchased a five-bedroom house. And I'm like, God, why'd you call me now? <laughs> and you want me to go back? We're doing good here. The, the fried chicken is crispy. The sweet, the sweet tea is just so sweet. New Jersey don't know nothing about our sweet tea, y'all. They don't know. Uh, down south, sweet tea. <laughs> we were just drinking sugar. <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> and so I'm like, God, why'd you call me? Why'd you call me? And so I had to have a moment with God. And he began to speak to my spirit. 
And he said, I ordained this before the foundation of the world. And, I, and he just began to show me different pictures of why he ordained me to go back. As a matter of fact, watch this. Uh, my administrative assistant when I was uh, in North Carolina, she, she was close to my wife and I, and she had five dreams about us leaving North Carolina and going back home to finish the work that was started. Little did she know, she didn't know that my great aunt started the church and that it was in the family. But God, because God works with her through dreams, so he visited her five different times because he knew that she has my ear. He knew that she has my wife's ear. So she dreamt these dreams and she told it to my wife first and we were at Friendly's Bishop and we, not Friendly's, Fridays. And we were having a celebration dinner for one of my praise team members. She was going off to college and we was having this good old time. And, uh, and I noticed that, you know, she was over there talking to my wife and, and I kind of ignored it because, you know, sometimes my wife, she can talk. She loves to talk. <laughs> She's a talker. It is, baby. I ain't going to deny it. I come to realize it's a gift, and I value and appreciate your gift because you talk when I don't have to. <laughs> yeah. You value the gift. Amen. I used to be annoyed by the gift, but now I value the gift. <laughs> I love the gift. <laughs> so she's over there talking to my wife. Then, you know, after a while, we just get tired, fellas. It's just like, it's, it's just time to go home. So she said, no, you need to hear this. And I'm like, oh, God. I already knew what was about to go down. So when she brought me over and she began to tell me the dream, and not only that, but before that, God was dealing with me even before then with different prophecies and this and that. So the point is, is that it got down to the point that, okay, it's time to move. I had to transition my thinking and I had to detach from where I was. And I had to get my mind and say, look, it's not about me. It's about God. It's not about what I like because God knows I, the desires of my heart. He knows what I love. But at a certain point in your life, it's going to come a time when you're going to have to make a sound decision and say, okay, God, this is you calling. This is you calling. And, and so we got to a certain point, and I cut the ties, not really cut the ties, but I, we left. Watch this. We, we left, right? And, and again, I'm at this moment of the football field, and, you know, knowing that, you know, God, you called me, so you're just going to lay this thing out, man. I mean, we're going to make this transition without a flaw. We're going to hit 95. We're just going to pack it up and... <laughs> You know, move to Beverly, you know, we're just going to do it big. Because, God, you called me. Remember, you called me, so you're going to straighten out the road, and you're going to make it straight. It was totally opposite. All hell began to break loose. We, we loaded up the truck, and, and the people that brought our house, ugh, I am so off. But the people that brought, brought our house, right, it, you know, they brought it with cash. And for the longest, we were struggling to sell our house. And, and, and so we got down to the wire, whereas I was going to have a mortgage and rent, too. And so I'm just like, okay, God, you told me to go. Why is it my house selling? Because I just knew it was just going to sell just like that. So why isn't it selling, God? What's going on? Faith requires action. You must be able to move even though things around you are chaotic. You must be able to move and say, God, I trust you. For you I live and for you I die. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You must be able to keep on moving despite trouble, despite hardship. So watch this. So we're getting down to the bottom of it. And our real estate agent, she's like, I don't know. So we get these, we, we finally get a buyer. And she said, listen, she was talking to my wife. And she said, listen. We got a buyer, and we've been down that road before because we had a buyer before, and he kind of jumped ship on us. And so we're at this point again, and she says, you have a buyer. It's not hard. He's a cash buyer. And I said, okay, praise the Lord. So he made his offer. We counted the offer. Finally, we settled. 
This is why you must be able to trust God. Because you don't understand what God is doing behind the scenes. It's more than what we see. Life is more than what we see. We just see things, but life is more than what we see. And so check this out. She said, okay, we got we to gotta buy him. He wants to buy your home. He's a cash buyer. This is how it went down. We settled on Monday. He said, yeah, I want your house. I said, okay, cool. We, we load, I loaded up the truck. My wife and I, we loaded up the truck because we had to go down there and settle the business. So we left on Tuesday. I got the check by Friday. It was in the bank before the bank offices closed. We closed in three days. My real estate agent, our real estate agent, she said, this has never happened before in all the 11 years of my life. I said, you know why? Because I serve a God that supersedes all natural abilities. We settled in three days. This is, so this is what it taught me. You must be able to trust God even though you don't see him. You must be able to believe God even though you can't put your hand on what's going on. You must be able to put feet to your faith and keep walking even though things around you are falling apart, falling to pieces. You must be able to trust God because he's working behind the scenes. He's working behind the scenes for your good. And the Bible says in Romans 8, and we know this, that all things work together for the good that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. Let me close with this because I'm just so off my, my whole story. But I believe this was meant. Once a plane, give me some atmosphere. I love atmosphere. <laughs> atmosphere. <laughs> you do too. That's why we play music. That's right, right. Mm -hmm. I love atmosphere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So watch this. Once a plane, 600,000 pounds, once it takes off and it gets to cruising altitude, it must remain at that speed to maintain its level. Because if it doesn't, it will drop, drop just like a rock and it will surrender again to gravity. It will surrender again to gravity. But once this plane it's the cruising altitude and it's moving just like our very lives. Once we get to cruising altitude and things don't bother us the way they used to, we don't talk the way we used to, we don't even walk the way we used to do. What a change in my life. <laughs> Once we get to another level, God says, stay right there. Yeah, stay right there. Because once you stop believing, you will surrender again to gravity. And Satan will pull you right back to where he had you. And you will surrender again to his laws. As powerful as God is, as mighty as God is, if you don't stay there and trust God, Satan will come in. And you will immediately surrender your life again to him. And he will take over your life. Why? Because you surrendered your strength to his. You surrendered your strength to his. But God didn't create you like that. He didn't create you to surrender to his. He created you to be the head and not the tail. He created you to be above and not beneath. He created you to be strong and mighty. Bigger than what you see. He created you to be large and in charge. But if you don't believe it, you surrender again to Satan's power.
let me let me say this and we'll close. I was I was reading about, you know, because I'm always reading stuff to for inspiration. And I was reading about Steve Jobs. You know, the iPhone guru. You know, your iPhone, iPad, all that stuff. Do you understand that Steve Jobs was adopted? He was adopted. His father never wanted to know him, not even see him. He grew up without a stern and complete family. He was a college dropout. Steve Jobs, iPhone, iPad. He was a college dropout. That don't make me feel so bad. <laughs> Watch this. He returned five cent bottle caps to buy food with. He was struggling. He was struggling. But check this out. He believed beyond what he believed. He believed in himself. And not even saying he was a Christian. Watch this. This is important because just because you're a Christian doesn't make, make it like you're going to be successful just because you're a Christian. Because I know a many broke Christians. I know a lot of them. So just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you're going to be large and in charge. You must believe in you. How God created you. And watch this. This is where we have that extra, uh, because God comes in us. We, we are a part of him. And so he causes us to be more than we think we are because of his strength and not ours. Because in him we live. So that's what separates us from the world. Causes us when the world wants to fall and, and complain and cry and this and that. God says, no, I've given you strength. I give you my peace that transcends your understanding, that shall guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So when things are chaotic around you, God says, stand. Stand. Don't give up. But this man, he was struggling. But watch this. And we'll close with this. I'm serious. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. Here's some statistics. He was worth $1 million when he was 23. $10 million when he was 24. This is an orphan, y'all. God, guy that didn't have a father. His father didn't want nothing to do with him. At the age of 25, he was worth $100 million at the age of 25. God says, this is my law. You either receive it or you don't. You either believe it or you don't. It's up to you. I can't make you believe what I had already set in motion. I know you were a little nervous when you got up here to sing, but because you pushed through. And I heard it when it clicked. When you pushed, Paul said it best. He said, I press. He said, I press. Press. And because you press, God used you to bless his people. I reached over to Pastor Knight and I said, whose baby is that? Where is she coming from? <laughs> from Florida. Then when I heard she's related to Sally. I said, okay, that explains it all. <laughs> Listen.
years ago. Just because you're gifted doesn't mean you're going to go far. You must believe in who God created you to be. I know it's tough. I know it's tough at all. But you are more than you think you are. I know things are tough at all. But God created you for such a time as this. You're better than you think you are. There's a promise waiting. There is such a benefit waiting for your lives if you just press through. Even when kids start getting on your nerves, ignore them. You have the power to. Even when things at home are going chaotic, take your mind to a safe place. Begin to open up your Bible and start reading. My son Isaiah, he, he told me this, and I'm going to pray over the youth, and, and I'll be done. My son, he lost it. Well, his phone broke. He had an iPhone and it broke. And this was like the second phone. I'm like, look, bro. <laughs> you're going to have to suffer this one out. I'm not, we not buying no cell phone right now. <laughs> but I wanted to teach him a lesson. And so he went without a cell phone for a little while. But watch what happened. He started finding new loves. One in the most important love was God. I used to see him reading his Bible. Then he would come in, he would ask us questions. And so he would read this scripture and he said, Dad, what does this mean? Because he lost his cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> and we know that all things. <laughs> he said, we begin to talk to him. Watch this. And because of a broke phone, his worship went to another level. He just told us a few days ago, he said, Dad, man, I'm starting to feel God in such a different way. Because he started going closer to God. <laughs> for a broke cell phone. Yes, and so, because of him going to closer to God, now he has a better cell phone. <laughs> Watch this. And he paid for half. <laughs> God is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. He, re he will reward you. Go after him. Find out what this God is really all about. Early in the morning will I seek his face. Late in the midnight hour before I close my eyes to sleep, I will seek his face. I will take a break in the afternoon and I will seek his face. Because I need to hear direction. I need to hear where we are going. I will seek you, Father. I don't understand right now what's going on around me. But, Father, you and I, we got this love affair. And I know you got this. And so I will seek your face. I will seek your face. I might not understand everything that's going on. But I will seek your face. I will seek your face. I will love you, Father. I will love you. And when you begin to have a love affair with our Creator, He will show you things that you thought was impossible. And just like that 600,000 pound plane, that if it's not moving, it's impossible to move. But once it starts to move, you can't stop it. You can't stop it. Stand to your feet. Nobody greater.
<laughs> nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Oh, hallelujah. Sing it. Nobody greater. Oh, nobody greater. Nobody greater than all my babies. Come on up here. All the youth. All the youth. Come on. All the youth. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Turn it up a little bit more. Hallelujah. Sing this. Nobody greater. All of the children. And can we have our elders standing?